Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of the news. My name is Abigail Alfrey. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I pray you're having a very blessed day. As always, we have some exciting news and promotions this week, as well as a really special interview with Dr. Roy Clauser. This will be at the end of the news, so stay tuned for that. So let's get right into it. We have some more new mini courses to announce this week. The first of those is Christian Discernment Skills. That is worth 80 points. And Henry Reinga and Steve Elzinga get into, you know, what is discernment? How do we discern things as Christians, like in your worldview? And how do you apply that to your life? Then the second of our classes is, of a mini course, excuse me, is Miracles. And that one is worth 70 points and it features material from Dr. Robert C. Newman. So I would love to hear how you guys are liking the mini courses. Maybe comment below what your favorite mini course is so far, but make sure to check out those two new ones. So this week we are celebrating our vision partners. And as a small token of our thanks, we have some coupon codes for store credit um, please go to your hub to find these. If you are a copper, bronze, or iron vision partner, you'll have $10 of store credit. And for silver, gold, or platinum, you'll have $25 of store credit. As always, we are so thankful for your support and generosity. So we highly encourage you to find this coupon code and head over to the Christian Leader store and get yourself some merchandise. As a second token of thanks, um, if you have been considering upgrading to giving 25 or more dollars a month, we have some free promotion packages for you. So we have one for men and for women. And as you can see on the screen here, we have some shirts, sunglasses, pens, books, keychains, some jewelry, and an ID card. So these are really fun packages. Um, so yeah, if you have been considering upgrading, please email a Merkel at christianleaders.net. That is Anne's email address, and we will communicate with you to get you upgraded and get you those exciting free bundles. So I have um, two of the shirts here. This is one of the shirts in the men's bundle, the influencer one. And then this is the Joy shirt that is in the women's bundle. So very nice, very high quality shirts. And yeah, I definitely encourage you to check out those packages as a token of our thanks. So now we're going to head right over to the interview with Dr. Clauser. All right, I am joined here with Dr. Roy Clauser, a very great mind. I'm honored to be interviewing him. So would you mind telling the students a little bit about your educational background and you know the courses you teach already here at CLI? Sure, I'd be, ha be happy to. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I have a, a BA in philosophy from Gordon College. That's a small liberal arts Christian college. It's about 35 miles north of Boston. And I have a BD that from Reformed Episcopal Seminary, which at that time was in Philadelphia. It's just relocated outside the city now. Mm -hmm. um, that was a long time ago, as you can tell, because it, seminaries now don't give a BD. They don't give a Bachelor of Divinity. They give sure. a sacred master's the, uh, degree, sacred theology masters, and um, but I just went there so long ago that it was a BD, <laughs> and then um, I started graduate school at Harvard in the history and philosophy of religion program, okay. and and found that I I couldn't stay because I didn't have the money, and uh, Harvard at that time wouldn't take government loans in payment, Interesting. so I transferred to the University of Pennsylvania, okay, which did take the Pay the sure. government loans and payment. That's what enabled me to finish uh, finish up there. I got my uh, PhD um, at Penn in 72, um, and I wrote my dissertation on Herman Doyward and his idea of a Christian philosophy. Okay. Um, happily, they approved that subject. I proposed <laughs> it, and they said, <laughs> the chairman of the department says to me, we're gonna approve this on two conditions. He said, one is that you go there and work on it with him. And they gave me a fellowship and sent me to Amsterdam to, oh darn, <laughs> yeah. somebody has to do these things. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the second is that when you get done writing that dissertation, Doyward writes me a letter and says that you have him straight, you have him right. We're not gonna examine you on whether you got Doyward right. Nobody here is going to read all that stuff. <laughs> but we, we want to know whether you think he is right. That's how, uh, what, how we'll examine you. Wow. So um, then when I, when I finished, I, I spent parts, 
all of one summer and part of another in Amsterdam uh, conferring with Doi Weerd on it. And then when I came back the second time, uh, my advisor, Jim Ross, told me that he got that letter from Doi Weerd saying that I had him straight. And, wow. uh, and then they, they arranged the, the defense of the, you know, the oral defense. By the way, um, you may not know this, and maybe some of your viewers won't either. Sure. But in Europe, when somebody writes a PhD dissertation, there's an oral defense, but it's, uh, it's a celebratory occasion. You invite your friends and relatives, oh, and you have a caterer <laughs> there for afterward because nobody ever flunks. Oh. Here, that yeah, is not a true. That's different, right? <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> huh. In fact, the story was all over pen just before I came up for my defense about a, a student. This was not in philosophy, it was in another field. He wrote his dissertation, came up for the defense, and they failed him. Now, this means he's taken all the coursework, he's passed the language exams, he's uh -huh. passed the PhD exams, uh -huh. he's gotten the topic for his dissertation. In conferring with his committee, he's written this dissertation. They all agree it's ready to be defended, and he comes up and flunks. Oof. So he decided not to be defeated by that. He got a second topic, wrote another dissertation, came up to defend it, and failed the second time. Oh, no. I, I guess that's when you go to the parking lot and open an artery or something. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, oh, yeah, that is tough. Yeah, that, that is... That's the kind of nightmare you don't want to hear about when you're coming <laughs> right. up to defend your, your dissertation. Ooh, that is intense. But yeah, so it was a lot of years, uh, sure. a long time in school, and, uh, and I had to go part-time most of it. Um, I had to earn my own way through, mm -hmm. and I ended up up to here in debt. <clears throat> yeah, so... Which is something your students don't have to do. Yeah, so is there this any is, message of like encouragement to absolutely, the students? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, stick with it. This is a great opportunity. You, uh, it's, in fact, it's unheard of. I don't know of anything else like this anywhere in the world where you can get an, an entire degree um, and all the courses come to you uh, videotaped and the readings come to you and the exams and, and cost you nothing. That's terrific. It's, a, it's yeah. a big blessing, and wonderful. to have wonder profess wonderful professors like you, it's a, it's a great opportunity. <laughs> so well, Dr. Clauser is you. here for this week filming yeah. Ancient Philosophy. Yes, we're taping Ancient Philosophy this yeah. week. It's all, the earliest philosophers uh, right through Plato and Aristotle. It's very yeah. interesting mm -hmm. stuff. And then yeah. you'll be back in September to do another Modern course. philosophy. Okay, that, so you got the ancient, you got the modern. <laughs> yeah, which I should explain does not mean what's happening right now. Right. It, it, philosophers use that term modern in a peculiar way. They, it means 1600 to 1800. Okay. Or Descartes got it. to Kant. Hmm. So we do the rationalist, the empiricist, and Kant. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a course I've taught many times and I enjoy it. So I look forward to coming back and doing that one too. I remember my colleagues in the department didn't want to do A Course in Kant <laughs> because he's among the most difficult thinkers that uh, students struggle with. Um, there's a little book booklet that uh, is a kind of crib sheet, you know, a cheat sheet on, the, on yeah. philosophy, and it has... Uh, Philosophers, philosophers summarized. You go there and you read two or three pages mm -hmm. on a philosopher, and it gives you his main ideas and so sure. on. And I remember seeing it on a student's desk one time, and I picked it up and turned to Kant. Mm -hmm. And the first sentence is, confirms your worst fears. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a, a tough course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, there's a way to ease into that. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so look out for those two courses. And yeah. then you already have four courses here with us, right? Yes. Um, I've already uh, recorded mm -hmm. a course in symbolic logic. Okay. That's just the first semester. and It's not, not the more advanced stuff, mm -hmm. but, but the intro for logic. Um, and then uh, I also did comparative religion. Yep. And I did a course of philosophy of religion. And then one on the idea of a Christian philosophy. Yes. Um, Henry wanted that uh, especially, mm -hmm. and of course that's what I did my dissertation on, so it's, it's a real <laughs> interest of mine. Mm -hmm. the, the, it may surprise you to know that the vast, vast majority of Christian thinkers mm -hmm. over 2,000 years have all believed that a Christian philosophy is impossible. 
hmm. that it doesn't make any sense to talk about. That that's, wow. makes no more sense than Christian mathematics or Christian biology, one of them said. And see, because I think there is a Christian philosophy, I think there is a Christian approach to math and biology. Sure. It, it, it goes with it. So that's what uh, Doeyward and that Dutch school of Calvinists who had been working on for 100, 150 years. Mm -hmm. And Doeyward came up with an entire ontology, a theory of reality that is driven uh, by belief in God from the outset. It's not that you do philosophy and then you find room to tag God on the end like the tail on the birthday party donkey. <laughs> right. You, you start with your, the fact that you know that only God has absolute being, mm -hmm. only God is self-existent and everything but God depends on God. And that gives you a very different outlook Right. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So, yeah. so if you haven't taken any of those classes, definitely check them out. They're super interesting. Yeah. And look out for two new philosophy classes this yes. fall. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah.